if you are an investor into the gene editing industry or you consider to become one you'll certainly come across CRISPR therapeutics they are one of the leading and perhaps one of the most well-known companies in this industry and with this video I'd like to provide you an update and some exciting news that CRISPR therapeutics have recently published and I'm absolutely sure that you'll want to consider this information before deciding to either invest for the first time or to increase your existing position into CRISPR therapeutics. Although I have a PhD in biomedical engineering and over 15 years of working experience in the healthcare industry, I do not intend to give you investment advice. Please do your own research before making any investments. You are watching Health Wealth. If you're new to this channel, welcome. If you're not, nice to have you back. You may already be aware that Vertex Pharmaceuticals and CRISPR Therapeutics have formed a partnership a long time ago. Now on April 20th of 2021, both companies have announced in their press release that they have amended their collaboration agreement to develop, manufacture and commercialize their clinical program CTX001. CTX001 is a CRISPR-Cas9 based gene editing therapy that is targeting sickle cell disease as well as beta thalassemia. The previous 50-50% uh, program or collaboration has now been revised for 60% and 40% respectively. That means 60% of the program costs for the global development, manufacturing and commercialization will be provided by Vertex where they then will receive equally 60% of the commercial proceeds. CRISPR Therapeutics under the revised agreement will be responsible to cover 40% of the ongoing development costs and then in return receive 40% of the commercial proceeds. Furthermore, with the agreement, CRISPR Therapeutics will receive a $900 million upfront payment and a potential for an additional 200 million payment once the first regulatory approval for the CTX001 treatment has been granted. This sort of collaboration that we're seeing here is a classical example that happens many times in the biotech and pharmaceutical industries, where a well-established company, Vertex Pharmaceuticals, having been founded in 1989 as well established in the industry and has vast regulatory uh, expertise as well as the knowledge to bring medicines to market and to commercialize them and on the other hand we have CRISPR therapeutics a comparatively new company highly innovative with very targeted uh, research in the gene editing field but perhaps with slightly less experience in bringing a new treatment commercially to market and this is where such a collaboration brings the best of two worlds together. Innovation in terms of new treatments, as well as with the expertise of how to bring this new treatment in the most rapid and fast way commercially to market. And this is precisely the point why this amended collaboration should catch the eye of any future existing or current investor because this collaboration agreement is not only for the development but also for the manufacturing and the commercialization of CTX001 for the treatment of sickle cell disease and beta thalassemia. Then we can also much better understand and put into context the February 1 press release which talked about the appointment of Philip Drouet as the chief commercial officer. Mr. Durrett brings with him over 20 years experience in a successful launch of global oncology and hematology brands. And this seems to make him the perfect fit for what is about to happen in the CRISPR therapeutics and Vertex pipeline. And this takes us to the truly exciting press release from April 26, 2021, which gives us a hint at potential timelines for commercialization that we might be looking at. The headline reads, Vertex and CRISPR Therapeutics announce priority medicines or prime designation granted by the European Medicines Agency for CTX001 for transfusion-dependent beta thalassemia. And as we can read a few lines further down, 
the prime designation was already granted for the treatment of sickle cell disease back in the year 2020. And so this means that CTX001 has now prime designation by the European Medicines Agency for the two indications for which it is being investigated. According to the EMA website, the PRIME scheme has been launched in order to enhance support for the development of medicines that target an unmet clinical need. Under this designation, there is also an accelerated assessment. The PRIME designation also ensures more frequent interactions between CRISPR therapeutics or vertical and the EMA with a dedicated rapporteur, and this should in the end lead to a quicker access for patients to be able to obtain the new medicine uh, quicker in a commercial way. And this, of course, is music to any investor's ears. In this overview, taken directly from the EMA website with a status of April 22, 2021, you can see that 72% of applications for prime designation actually are denied. And in the chart below, where the breakdown by therapeutic area is listed, we can see that in the hematology area, 17 applications have been granted and 9 have been denied. So overall, prime designation does not fall from the sky and is testament to the promise that the CTX001 treatment actually holds. And here is the evidence taken directly from the EMA website of the CHMP uh, meeting minutes from April 2021, showing the evidence that indeed CTX001 has been granted the prime status. As always, you can check for links in the description below the video. However, if we continue to read the press release from CRISPR Therapeutics, CTX001 has received other fast-track designations. It has received fast-track orphan drug rare pediatric disease designation from the FDA, as well as the Regenerative Medicine Advanced Therapy classification. And this applies to both indications for beta thalassemia as well as sickle cell disease. Additionally, the EMA also for both indications has granted the orphan drug status. The orphan drug status is limited to life-threatening or chronically debilitating diseases and the prevalence in the European Union must be no more than 5 or 10,000. However, as investors we need to be cautious that orphan drug designation does not mean that the market authorization has been granted, that is, with orphan drugs cl classification the medicine cannot yet commercially be sold on the market. This only follows completion of the marketing authorization stage. Once this hurdle is taken, however, an orphan medicine enjoys 10 years of market exclusivity. This means no other competing medicines can be brought into the market and be commercialized during this time. And this could mean once CTX001 is commercially approved, that it will be the only game in town in the European Union during this time frame. If we take a quick look at clinicaltrials.gov related to the status of CTX001, we find that in these studies we have 45 patients enrolled for the sickle cell disease arm as well as 45 patients enrolled for the beta thalassemia arm. And the studies started in November 2018 or September 2018 respectively and are planned to conclude in the May timeframe of 2022. And these are phase one and two studies. Under normal circumstances, commercialization or a market authorization granting happens after successful completion of the phase three clinical trials. In this case, however, with prime designation, orphan drug designation, fast track, etc., as well as these recent press announcements from uh, CRISPR Therapeutics, we stand to believe that potentially the treatment CTX001 may be commercialized perhaps around the time frame of May 2022 or potentially perhaps earlier. And this could have a profound impact on the stock price of CRISPR Therapeutics. I hope you found this video highly informative and useful to make your own investment decisions. If you enjoyed this content, please consider liking and subscribing to my channel. Thanks in advance. And if you'd like, please leave me a comment and let me know how you decide to invest in CRISPR therapeutics.
or if there are other companies you'd like me to take a look at.